<laughs> well, good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? Oh, it might be a quick video this morning because my battery's going flat. I'm down to 20%. I curse, I curse Apple, I curse them for the day they decided that it would be clever to make the charging socket and the headphone socket the same socket. So not that I've got an iPhone, I haven't, I've got a Pixel 2. But what happens is Google then did the same thing. So now instead of being able to listen to the phone overnight and charge it up, I have to choose. I can either charge it up and wake up my wife or listen and let it go flat. So now in the morning, instead of uh, waking up and having a fully charged phone, I've got a fully flat phone. And then I have to charge it during the day. The whole thing has gone, has gone asked about you know what. So let's get straight to the meat of it, straight to the meat. Those of you sort of regular viewers of the old blog have uh, know that uh, I decided to make the receptionist job redundant. The job of reception, not the receptionist, the actual position, receptionist, dental receptionist, I've decided is no longer necessary. So I'm nothing less than pioneering in absolutely everything. And I've been, I had a long, uh, you know, uh, a long list of reasons why it was a good idea, mostly uh, to do with computerization and automation of uh, recalls and uh, people communicating by email instead of phoning in now. So, but it might be different in your surgery. In my surgery, that's, it's just, you know, we've got a lot of patients who all use email. So what we're going to do is we're going to spread the reception, what remains of the receptionist job out amongst the nurses. And to be honest, uh, they're quite keen to do it, you know, because based on this principle that staff would rather be busy than sitting around inventing work or trying to do nothing. Um, so they've realized that they have got the time to do this. So what, what do we think they have? We think they have. <laughs> we're just gonna find out, aren't we? So today's the day, the first day of the new experiment with no receptionist. And you're like, oh, you know, what, you haven't discovered anything. You know, I've, I've had a nurse receptionist for years. And that is true. The, the old single-handed dentist very rarely had a nurse, recep a nurse and a receptionist, did he? He had, had uh, one girl who had to put the suction down every time the phone rang. Um, the difference is that uh, we're not really going to encourage people to ring us anymore. We're going to encourage people to email us, unless it's urgent. Um, and then we're going to get like a phone which is portable, so that will be useful. And the only time really the nurse will be necessary will be to make a payment. And even then the payment is not that tricky, is it? you only got to type the number and get them to put the card in and then all the receipts and that and everything can be emailed out at the end of the day or whenever you get a minute so the reason why it's happened today is not because today's the, the day that my receptionist employment is terminated it's because today's the I've sent her home on gardening leave cut a long story short and uh, a lot of people recommended, you know, they said, oh no, you know, as soon as you make someone redundant, you have to send them home on gardening leave. And I'm like, hmm, do you really? You don't really. I mean, you know. So we came to a compromise where I just told her that she would be expected to work her notice. Um, but, but, and they, I found out what the problems are really with doing that. And having said that, although she was quite professional, she was also quite, uh, you know, no, nobody who knows that they're being made redundant or their job is being made redundant is ever happy. And, you know, it's just, how long can you carry on with an unhappy receptionist, you know? And I don't mean unhappy as in smashing stuff about. But I do mean unhappy as in just generally uh, 
gradually ramping up a policy of passive resistance, you know, which consists of, you know, not not speaking to you unless you've spoken to, uh, ceasing work on all projects that are in progress, um, not telling you things that you need to know, um, and just generally, just general stupidity, you know, and I call it, I do call it stupidity because um, in, in employers, you know, I know people say employees have the upper hand, but in matters like this, in, they don't, they really don't. Employers have the upper hand in matters like this. And uh, assuming that she is expected to get some sort of a job in the future, uh, it really is very much against her interest to act, you know, to be stupid about how she, how she behaves during the uh, period of notice. But having said that, you know, the atmosphere got so, uh, it's, a, it's a variety of minor things, you know, like, like we have quite a good social life as a practice and then you're like, uh, well, what should we do? You know, suppose we want to go and see a local play or something. Should she be invited? Well, the answer is, of course, yes, she should be invited. But would, will she come? No, she'll always say, no, I can't. I am, unfortunately, I'm washing my hair that day, you know. And the whole the whole atmosphere of the practice gets poisoned. Um, so I've come to the conclusion that much against Angry's better instincts with regard to value for money, uh, and bearing in mind that I think she's only got like about four or five weeks to go, that we're, we're, all, be we're all better off without her. You know, we are all better off without her. Uh, and what it means is that, is that, to a certain extent, I'm going to have to take over the um, the running of the books. But then that's not something I'm unfamiliar with. I mean, I have, it, it was me that introduced the way that we run the books. I'm perfectly happy um, running the books. Uh, and at the moment, probably this week is atypical because we've got quite a busy week this week. Um, because I've had a week off for Easter, so we had the week off beginning the 2nd of April, and so this is our first week back after a week off, so we are in fact sort of reasonably busy this week, but then next week again we're pretty slack, and the week after that we've almost got nobody booked in, so um, I don't think, and doing the books is a thing that you really only need to do like once or twice a month, yeah, you can do it at the end of the month when you do the wages, you know, just get everything up to date, so it's not a massive deal. Uh, it just involves reconciling the uh, your accounts with the bank accounts, and once you've got the hang of that, once you've done it for a month or two, it's the same every month for you. Once you've got all the same payments going out. So, what else can I tell you about making someone redundant? You've got to. Uh, I mean, and the other thing is that when you're making a job redundant, and there are certain elements of the way that their job is carried out that you're not, you're not happy with, you know, that you're not, you don't want done a certain way. So I'll, I'll give you a, just a stupid, for example, okay, but this is sort of indicative of the general level of uh, silly buggery that was going on. This receptionist had invented a signature that she put in all her emails and it was it was horrendous it was cut and pasted from every other footnote that she'd ever seen in any email she'd ever received along the lines of you know uh, if you have uh, you know this this communication is intended for the recipient only and if you have received it in error you should uh, immediately delete it notify us and uh, uh, and wrap yourself up in a black plastic bag and away for collection, you know? It's like me. I've got a wasp in here. Stand by. <laughs> it was. <laughs> oh dear me. 70 miles an hour on a jill carriageway and I've got a wasp two inches from the top of my head. <laughs> that's. that's that takes some bollocks not to panic when that happens, I tell you. Oh, I just have to add that to the long list of things that have happened in the podcast. Uh, 
so yeah where was I so yeah so she's got this horrendous signature and it's in like five different typefaces and six different colors and three different fonts so <laughs> It's like real, it's a real, uh, you know, it's not like a footnote, it's a real warning, you know, Achtung Minen, stay off the beaches, you know, the bomb squad has been notified. And I asked her, I said, look, please can you not, this does not fit in with either the, the ethos or the design imperative for the practice. It's not, it looks horrible and I think it's overly aggressive, you know. And, uh, she said, yeah, fine. And then as soon as I was out of the room, it was back in there again. Now, I don't know whether she forgot or, uh, or uh, what is um, far more likely is that she decided that in this matter, she was knew best and was correct. And I didn't understand the importance of a legal footnote and I was therefore uh, wrong to ask her to remove it and perhaps she even thought that she was but you know by virtue of this assiduous approach to legal matters was was actually protecting me against myself but the fact of the matter is it was something I asked her to do nicely on more than one occasion and which she did not do and uh, and that's not that was not the reason for making the job redundant don't get me wrong but I'm just saying that, given that the job was being made redundant, you have to ask yourself how much longer you want the the wrong things to carry on, as well as the right things. I mean, her doing the accounts for me was great. Her, her being unnecessarily aggressive in her email communications with the patients was wrong. And so, in getting rid of some of the, the good things, you're getting rid of some of the, the wrong things as well. So all, the, all this added up to just saying that, you know, it might be better for everyone concerned if you didn't come back to work after Easter. And uh, she's, um, you know, she needs, I, I, I mean, obviously, we didn't talk much. The last week that sort of really made my mind up, we didn't really talk much at all. So I can't really say that I know what progress she's made on finding alternative employment. I hope she's she's landed a plum job somewhere if she has she hasn't told me and she's still got to be available uh, <clears throat> all the time I'm paying her so it's not like uh, it's not like uh, you know she can just get a job somewhere else and, and get paid twice which is what Michael Watson did <laughs> when he left the GDPA he, uh, he was the secretary of the General Dental Practitioners Association <clears throat> and uh, his contract was terminated and he went and got a job at the British Dental Association and then uh, got uh, David Phillips to write us a, a legal letter threatening us because uh, we'd found out that he was getting paid twice, once from us and once from the BDA and uh, we tried to stop his wages. And so, uh, thanks to. So, I'd just like to, before I finally pop off, I'd like to say a final thank you to Michael Watson <coughs> for royally fucking over the General Dental Practitioners Association and uh, to David Phillips for assisting him. Anyway, perhaps I'll cut that bit out. Perhaps I won't, seeing as it's true. So, where else? Yeah, so she's not coming in. So we've got this, we've got, we've got a situation where we've, we've got one of our busiest weeks where we probably could, could use her. And, but in fact, you know, I mean, I can ring her up and say, look, can you come in tomorrow and just work? Because she's still an employee. And I have, I've reminded her, although, uh, you know, you don't like to have to, to, uh, that uh, she is technically still an employee and still bound by all the rules regarding, you know, acting under my direction and that she's not really supposed to contact the patients unless, because when when I bought the practice, there was a lot of contacting the patients, a lot. 
there was a lot of oh I'm afraid you know the surgery's changed hands oh I'm afraid that you know the associate that you used to work for I have to tell you this by law she's now working in X Wingham wherever you know and uh, should you wish to contact her this is her phone number you know I have to tell you by law and uh, the, the receptionist participated in this and I hope that she regrets doing that now I don't know it's not the same when a receptionist leaves because obviously there's no general dental council doesn't put you under any obligation to assist patients to find a receptionist who's left but the receptionist still has the uh, you know has had access hasn't she to all the data and still uh, knows all the patients personally and they all know her and think of her as a friend etc etc so um, and that's another reason, you know, possibly for writing to her a period when she wasn't at the practice because it just it just reduces. Not that I think that she would do this. Not that I don't think that she would do this because I've, I know people who would do this and have done this. But but uh, it reduces her chances of uh, doing anything silly, doesn't it? Like deleting the patient database or uh, sending out an email to everyone saying how sorry she is to be leaving you know and wishing them all the best of luck in the future with their dentistry um, but as I say I don't think I don't think she would do that but um, you know it, when someone's going you, you have to um, be pragmatic about it and, and also the letter you know telling her saying that I'm, so, I'm sure I don't need to tell you this but but you do have to tell them that. You, you have to say you know look, you're, you're gonna well, as expected, my battery ran out, but uh, I was just about finished anyway. But I was just going to say that uh, you do have to tell people these things, even though they're not, uh, you know, you don't think that they're going to do anything daft, but you have to tell them not to do anything daft. And that's not because you telling them will stop them doing anything daft if they're going to. It's because if they do do something daft, then, it, then later on in court you may come to rely on the fact that you told them not to do it. Uh, you know, and you don't want to get into a big argument about whether or not that you, you'd made it clear that you, the dull thing that they did was not allowed. So it's, um, thank you so much. So, and then, uh, you know, and I got someone to proofread this letter, really just to make sure that I'd, you know, see how it comes across, you know, because I didn't want it to come across as, as unfriendly. But as the person who proofread it said to me, really, there's no good way of saying this, you know, this you've just got to send it and then that's you know and and she was quite nice in return and sent me a nice little letter back but concentrated on the, how much money she was expecting to get you know so uh, it's been a difficult situation which I could go into a lot more detail about what I suspect people's motives were but it, there's no uh, there's no point I mean I'm I'm gonna get ultimately I'm gonna get what I want and she's gonna get what she wants so, which is money, I think. So, yeah, so that's about it, really. But, I mean, as you probably guessed, I'm doing this on the way home now. So, a whole day has gone by. And it's been the first day without the receptionist. So, um, I'm pleased to say that it was a busy day. And, overall, we uh, coped well, you know. There, there wasn't, considering it could have been a meltdown. And we, we could have been in the situation where I was saying to the girls, well, you know, don't worry, we'll... In a couple of weeks we'll have this all sorted out but in fact today we had it all sorted out and it was because I was able to say to them look I want you to do a lot less you know I don't want you to do this I don't want you to do that like with the lab bells for example she used to photocopy the lab bells which is uh, you know scan them you know and which I actually think is a good idea obviously because uh, later on you know you may come to want to know what was written on the lab bell especially in the event of a complaint but um, she uh, photocopied them as soon as they you know before they went off the lab the, for the first visit and then she used to photocopy them at the bite and then she used to photocopy them at the try and then at the retry so uh, she was just a bit of photocopy mad you know if a patient paid with a credit card um, she used to photocopy the credit card slip and uh, she just used to photocopy everything that came within five feet of her desk scan it rather you know and uh, there's no no telling her not to you know there's no she's like oh well 
I'll just do it. But it reminds me very much of a problem I came across when I was an associate, very, very first uh, job I went to, where they used to write down uh, the names and dates of birth and addresses of and the amounts that were being claimed on the health service and um, I mean this was really just in case anyone uh, said we sent off a load of paper claims and they got lost but they never did get lost um, so and there was a quicker way of doing it and it was taking people days to do this you know keep record of all these claims and uh, they could have just photocopied them or done something with them you know done them really quickly So I think that, I think probably 75% of her job was just make work, you know, it was just keep ringing patients who haven't contacted her and writing emailing to people, you know, writing emails to people who'd already had two SMS reminders and, and stuff like that. So I made a joke today about uh, someone who's coming in at the, at the end of the week and she said, oh, I think I'll remember that and I said do you want us to give you a ring in the morning to remind you and she said oh no for God's sake she said no I get more than enough reminders as it is you know without you ringing me as well so that's that's a little hint that we were just erring on the side of being too aggressive in terms of um, trying to get people in you know so like your hairdresser ringing you every couple of days saying do you want a haircut 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 <laughs> So we coped okay, so um, we'll see how it goes anyway. But a lot of the stuff won't get done every day, like the uh, bills will get done once a month and the bank reconciliation will get done once a month and that'll be it, you know. Right, I'm going to sign off now because I'm going to add this on to the end of this morning's What's It, so uh, my hair's still wild, as you can see and uh, got another busy day tomorrow so uh, I'll talk to you then okay bye